All right, let's quickly set that on here so that way my phone doesn't tip, maybe. Hello? Okay, sorry, I have to like balance my phone on it. Well, I think it should be fine without it. Yeah, as long as I don't touch it <laughs> or nudge it and nudge anything that could. So yeah, this little white on the side, I just have a couple of those like craft smart little dollar boxes that um you get for like small things. Like it says they're crayon boxes. I'll show you them later. But uh, anyway, hi, it's Mason. I'm here to do a flip through of my 46th journal. I nicknamed this one Donut because I nicknamed it after this bear character that I made. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna be open and say it. It's my fursona. Uh, he is a bear and he's got like icing all over his back and stuff like that and on his head and on his ears and junk. I'm working, trying to think of a little bit of a redesign for him. Just, just something to kind of spruce him up a little bit more. But that will come later and you'll probably see more of him whenever I do a sketchbook flip through because my sketchbook's kind of almost done but I've been a little slow with it lately. Anyway, this is the inside cover. Very candy birthday kind of themed minus this. I just printed off this extra picture for a meme that this literally tickled me so damn pink. So <laughs> um, I you'll hear about that later too but yeah, August. Not really much happened. Um, oh, I went to a convention. I had my name legally changed in court. Yeah, court name change and then uh, FurCon. Yeah. Uh, I did start this journal pretty late. I didn't start writing until the 11th of August because I was so busy working on my uh, Disney travel journal that I was like, okay, really nothing else is going on right now in my life, minus like a little bit of work, um, like just some work days and stuff like that. Like I was on call for a little bit because I wanted to unpack and settle and just kind of recoup a bit to home. And yeah, but I'm still really freaking proud of my uh, of my journal or my travel journal let me try to get this a little higher because it's not quite lord I'll be all right I swear now it's just getting to be too tall to wear okay well this will probably have to do I think anyway um just a lot of writing and stuff Okay, so this is the day that I got my name legally changed. Uh, legally. So, it's officially Mason Elliot Cunningham as of this point in time. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, I woke up a bit early because I was like... Uh... Because I, I was like, okay, I gotta be ready for my court date, or my court time, and stuff like that. It was all online. Um, yeah, and I needed to schedule a therapy appointment in junk because I haven't seen my therapist until, like, recently, as of, like, February, because COVID hit the house, and then uh, my work put me on third shift which I don't care I still like working on third shift but uh it was just a lot to take in and even when I could remember to call them the doc's office wasn't open yet or I just didn't have energy to really call or whatever or whatever the case was yeah so I got ready well I didn't like get ready I just like put on like a decent looking shirt and like pulled up um, Zoom and junk and just like sat there waiting. I'm just like, uh, like I was like shaking. I'm like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Uh, like what, what will my, what will this judge like be like? Will this be like some crotchety old man judge that's like gonna just use his time in court to straight up lecture me about how me being non-binary or trying to change my name to a quote-unquote boy's name is a sin and then I'm gonna go to hell kind of junk, but like, <laughs> you never know. 
because like I know they really can't do that but like I, I don't know why a crotchety old man judge would want to really care but it's crotchety old men and crotchety old men still think that they are like I, I, I don't know it, it, it was just some like really not too unrealistic mentality over what could have happened that day but no when my zoom meeting was pulled up like I was my turn to go into the session or whatever it there was a woman judge and I'm like oh thank god this is a great start already I can feel it and she asked me um like hello are you so and so and blah 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 and I'm like yes ma'am and blah 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 and before we went on the record and junk she said okay now, before I officially start the court hearing and stuff like that, it will be on record. What are your pronouns, by the way? And I'm like, they, them, please. <laughs> like, they, them, thank you. And I'm like, okay, all my fears are, like, really melted off. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is it, this is it. So it was just really quick, like, are you, you know, changing your name to avoid, like, any sort of crime, like, past criminal records or any sort of things like that and I'm like no 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 no, not at all ma'am blah 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 I'm like okay like why are you changing your name to this and that and I said well uh Mason Elliott because uh it's just names that I think suit me better because I just never really liked my names growing up to begin with and from my last name to my current last name because I do not have a good relationship with my father and I just don't want to carry that around with me anymore for the rest of my life because I haven't seen him in over a year now and it just I'm ready to move on from it even further than I have now and when it was official um when she declared that it was official uh I was like trying to not cry in the middle of like like in the closing like closing statements kind of stuff and as soon as I shut my lap, like, I exited the Zoom call, I just was bawling. I was bawling with sheer joy. After I, like, composed myself a bit, I called, or I texted the family group chat, and I'm like, holy shit, it's official, I'm Mason Elliott Cunningham, like, legally as of today, and blah, 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 blah. And I, like texted some people at work I like put it on our on my uh like works group page kind of thing just like hey I'm officially Mason now legally woohoo and like two people got excited about it so I'm just like I don't care if I shouldn't have posted it there or not like every like their work family blah 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 to a degree I don't really get along with everybody there but you know what we're cordial <laughs> so <laughs> or civil enough but yeah it was absolutely <sighs> Everything was just so good. Everything was just so good from there. Oh, and also I went in like a reverse color thing, like purple, blue, teal, and then green. I really like how this page, these spreads turned out. It was very simple, very cute. Yeah, that was just fantastic. I'm still slowly working on, like, getting everything else switched over. Like, I think my mom was helping me recently with, um, getting my name changed over onto, uh, into, like, my insurance and stuff. So that way I can get, like, prescriptions put in for, or no, 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 because I did switch over my name on Social Security like, I just recently got my updated social security card. Uh, so it's, like, official, official now. Like, it being changed, like, your name legally being changed in court is one thing. But once it's changed in the social security office, it's, like, official, official, official. Like, it's solidified official at that point. So now my mom's, like, changing it over, or trying to help me with getting it switched over on my, uh... On like a, on sorry I read something like what the hell did I make three fifty four no it wasn't that but yeah it's so I can get like prescription stuff done like changing it over on my insurance and junk yeah so um yeah 
so yeah it was it's it's been great it's been fantastic so far oh so this uh i did recently go or i did recently send betty a package uh before she went to disney but after i went to disney and stuff like that because we will sometimes exchange packages for like christmas or just little swaps and stuff and um so i sent her package to her a bit before this but this day um it was my last day of working for a little bit because i was literally gonna go right off to another event um was this two weeks off in a row or was that i know it was last month too but no it was just one um, I just was a bit on call for, like, the first week, just because I wanted to, again, settle back at home and figure other things out before I had to get ready to leave again. So this day, my friend and I huddled together in her car, and we went to a spirit, well, we were going to go on a, on a bit of a road trip for the weekend to Indiana, and, um... We ended up stopping at a Spirit Halloween first to pick up, um, like, some newer things for my friend's cos- er, for Sona. Uh, we got- or er, my friend got a- a pillow that's shaped like a hot Cheeto bag and a blanket of hot- like, with the hot Cheeto bag design on it. And- <laughs> It was great. So- uh, we ended up driving to Indiana from where we are in Ohio, and it was just us blasting music in our car and just jamming out and just talking about, like, you know, like, what we hope to have happen at this furry convention, and, <laughs> uh, uh, when we got there initially, we checked in. And while my friend was waiting for a luggage cart, which they really didn't have a lot of apparently, and everybody had them in use because we had to wait like 10, 15, 20 minutes almost. And so, so while my friend was waiting for the trolley cart, or the luggage cart, I went upstairs. We were only on the second floor, so like, thank God if we don't need to use the elevator for anything, we're just one flight of stairs <laughs> up in our, or in my friend's suit. I didn't have one yet at the time. I, <laughs> but, um, my, I went upstairs to check the room to make sure, like, you know, there's no, nothing broken, nothing janky, like, do we have a microwave, we had a mini fridge, but no microwave, um, like, does the TV work, not even really gonna use it, but, like, you know, like, what's, the, what's the, sp what's the room situation like, and it was fine, just, we didn't realize until later that apparently none of the room's ventilation was working properly, because we asked a couple of people that we met at the con, like, hey, um, when you take a shower, did you have the, f like, were your fans working? Because our fans were not working at all, and just in general, the entire building circulation was garbage, but it wasn't that big of a problem. Like, we kept our room pretty cool because, you know, we're, my friend was in a suit, and I had a partial suit that I bought at this convention, too. But yeah, we met up with a friend of... Well, now are both of our friends, but at the time a friend of my friends. And we had Fazoli's, because that's our con staple food now is Fazoli's. And uh, it was just great. Um, I didn't really write anything for the rest of the weekend, though. But on Friday, well, as soon as we were, like, done with dinner and then we got settled into our rooms and stuff, I just crashed because I was literally working. I immediately got off of work and then hopped in my friend's car and we just skedaddled. And I'm just like, I really don't mean to, like, not hang out at, anymore for the rest of the day. But, like, I'm exhausted. And, like, I, like, I'm tired. Like, I literally was, I've been up for almost 24 hours now. So, like, I, I need to go to bed. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, that's so cool. Like, that's fine, that's fine. Like, go to bed, get some sleep. We won't disturb you as much as we can. Like, if we wake you up, we're sorry. And we're like, no, no, you'll be fine. So, I went to bed. But they went downstairs to, like, just kind of check out the scene. And, like, a few people were already in their fursuits and stuff. And were just kind of walking around 
having fun. But on the Friday, um, it was it was great. We went to a TikTok panel with a pretty pop a pretty popular um, TikToker on uh, a furry TikToker, and we recorded a few things like as like a panel group kind of thing, and it was so much fun. <laughs> my friend, oh my god, my friend's TikTok page. And then, oh my god, it was just great. It's a great time. Um, we just met a lot of people, hung out with a lot of people, talked to a bunch of people, and we went to we went to opening ceremonies. Um, we went to the dealer's den immediately afterwards. And in the dealer's den, I bought like a metric crap ton of stickers because they were just really, really cool. And at one point we were like, we went from like, like here was the entrance point. Like, we just went back and like around, like right here, like at the very last leg of it, I looked over and there was like a, a booth, like, like a table, like a dealer's table. And they had a couple of partials for sale, a dog and a cat. And I just kept staring at that cat and just like, temptation's really striking with me right now. Like I was thinking like if there was a partial suit or just something to work with here at this con that I was really like attached to or like just gravitated toward, I was going to pick it up. I didn't bring enough cash to pay, to pay for it with cause it was a lot of money. I'm not going to say exactly how much cause I don't really want to share that, but it was nothing that I would could, could care more or less about for what it was and the price that it, for the price, for the, for what it was and the quality of it and what all came together with that price, it was fine. But my friend was just like, you will not stop staring at that cat. And I'm just like, yeah, cause it's like, it's gorgeous. So my friend's like, well, get it. You don't know when you're going to see it. And it might be gone by the next time you come back in here. And I was like, sold. I went over that booth and I'm like, Hey, how much, like, can I check out? the cat partial real quick and they're like oh yeah, yeah yeah like they like I like took it off the mannequin head and I was like examining it and like gently touching the inside and just like okay like asking like some questions and stuff like that like okay so I just can't stop staring at it like I just keep getting more attached to it the more I look at it like feel it up now how much is it and so they said the price like what all came with it like it came with a head um like hand paws no feet paws because those are kind of harder to make for like to just sell partially um a tail that attaches to a belt um and a flower crown a pre-printed badge and then um reference art like the image of the badge like the image that was on the badge and then like what the head and like just like a small reference sheet digitally that they would send either to me, but at the time it was sent to my friend because they had Telegram and I didn't at the time. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sold. So like I, I paid for it and I'm like, okay, well, are you okay if I also buy stickers from you? And they're like, you literally just bought a redacted number. I'm just gonna say it, it was $2,000. You just literally bought a $2,000 partial suit from me. You can have some stickers, like you can just have them. And I'm like, oh, I'll just, like, I don't want to, like, jip you. And he's like, no, 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 no. You bought a $2,000 partial from me. So you can have it. And I'm like, oh, okay, thank you so much. Like, <laughs> thank you. He's like, no, 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 thank you. I wasn't expecting to sell so quickly. And I'm like, how can it not sell quickly? Like, it's adorable. I also got a couple of badges commissioned for my main fursona, which is, again, Donut This Bear. I didn't get anything made for Dandy yet. But a friend of mine literally just sent me a badge design that they drew for me and I was like sobbing because I'm like it's perfect also I named the partial suit dandy because it just the flower crown that it came with I I wanted to be like a main part of his design but I, I can't get it to stay on properly right now because like I can't figure out how to tie it on correctly so until then it's going to be kind of like just a minor accessory piece but oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's great. Um, and then on the Friday night rave, my friend and I, in our suits, because I pretty much wore dandy the rest of the time that we were there, uh, Wild and I went to the main hall where they were having like a Friday night rave. 
and we also brought well I got my friend a Kermit the Frog plushie when I was at um, Disney World sorry I got some weird belches coming up now so I'm sorry if you hear belches or whatever the hell might come out of my body so we went to the Friday Night Rave and uh, we brought Kermit with us we're just like well if anybody's gonna have a real party it's gonna be Kermit so <laughs> <laughs> what we did was we took this plushie, chucked him on the ground, like just quickly pitched him on the ground, like stood there like like with our arms like squared up to our sides and like squatted a bit and we're like bobbing back and forth a bit, just surrounding him. Like it was just the two of us, I think like one or two other people. And it didn't get that big, but we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, we recorded a couple of goofy ass TikToks in that mini bit that we have a little Kermit pit starting up and <laughs> um we put like a glow stick around his neck and like one behind it like in case we did lose him we'd be able to find him easier because it's dark and we have poor like obstructed vision so <laughs> um so yeah we had a great time it was just like it was very small but it was just a great little little just vibing just jamming out Saturday, though, is where it went fucking crazy. So, <laughs> um, Saturday night, we went to, or Saturday, we went to uh, a, um, a sketchbook swap. And I didn't get a whole lot of, like, artsy stuff drawn. It was just a lot of, like, kitty-looking noodles. And I ended up drawing, like, so there was so much, like, and because they were still practicing social distancing at this con and, like, masks were mandated and blah, 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 blah. Like, if you weren't in your, if you weren't in your costume, like, in your first Sona's head, you had to wear a mask. Like, that was the rules. Like, you couldn't go into any of the panels without a mask. Um, and if you weren't in your costume's head, you had to, you could, I mean, you couldn't, I mean, if you wanted to wear one in your head, that'd be, that's cool, but, like, you can't really fit in your head anyway. But, yeah, they were really pretty strict on masks and social distancing and stuff as best they could but the sketchbook swap had so many attendants to it that the room had like a fraction of it but the rest of it was all outside of it in the hallway it was fantastic though like I drew so many sketches of donut in people's sketchbooks I drew like I recreated some of the things that they had in their sketchbooks if they had something to work with like some people brought mini notebooks or whatever just for the like just for this occasion and I'm like that's smart <laughs> but um I should have grabbed it but I don't it, it's nothing really to write the folks home about to a degree but yeah I drew a lot of donut doodles and drawings and other things like if they had like a draw me page I would draw that but for the most part it was just donut and characters that they either had in their sketchbooks or like incorporated with like a side like a buddy buddy kind of sketch combo thing of something that was in their sketchbooks it was a lot of fun it was so much fun <laughs> and also somebody drew dandy when i was sitting in front of them and they were behind me I, it's also over there like on my night sinks i just can't stop looking I'm just like it's so cute like the guy was the guy i think said that he was autistic and stuff like that and i'm like oh well i mean that doesn't like so, like, but he was really quick at drawing this, like, in mostly Sharpies, I think, too. I'm just like, that is so impressive. Like, you did a really good job. I love this. Like, thank you so much, friend. Oh, this con was so, so nice, so soothing, such a fun, friendly atmosphere, minus, like, a couple people, but everybody pretty much needed to stay away from them. Like, there were these two older guys that people were calling the Chihuahua Brothers because they had, like, Chihuahua ears and tails and they had like walkers because they were older gentlemen, like much older guys. I mean, want to call them gentlemen. They were these were two older guys. Like they're not even gentlemen. And people were sit telling us because you know we're out of state. We're this is our first time at this con, and they were saying like, yeah, uh, avoid those guys like the plague. They're pedophiles. And we're like, oh, great. So um, yeah, we stayed stay the hell away from them as best we could. But they were pretty much floating around everywhere. So yeah, the Saturday night rave. This is where it became like every ounce of fun and games. So, <laughs> um, we had we did buy a pack of glow sticks when we were at Spirit of Halloween as well 
before the raid. Like, my friend put it in uh, her fur Sona's pickable nose because her friend, her fr my friend Sona Wild has a uh, septum piercing, which is like the hoop in the middle of the nose. So we had the idea to take that septum piercing and put a glow stick in it. And we also put like glow sticks in like the gauge holes that my friend's fur Sona has in his ears. And I put a couple of glow sticks in my care in Dandy's eyes, and then a few people that we met or were had joining us to go with us to the rave. Um, we put glow sticks in their eyes or in their pickable noses if they had them, or in their ears if they had ear piercings and stuff like that in their heads. And we also had the idea because it came with like pieces to make like a glow stick ball, and it happened to be just an just the right size to make like a glow stick harness for Kermit. So I literally was like jerry rigging this glow stick ball thing into like basically like a mankini kind of thing for Kermit. And it was, it was beautiful by the way. It didn't last the whole time because it, <laughs> you'll hear why. So again, it started as basic procedure with this thing. We took pictures outside before we went in or like after we went in for a little bit to see how busy it was. And then we went back outside to put more glow sticks in other people's eyes and ears and junk. Oh, and we also went to like a couple of like the dance competition on Friday or the dance off on Friday and the dance competition on Saturday. Fantastic stuff. It was, it was great. It was like watching um, a ballroom scene. And by that, I mean like gay ballrooms, like underground clubs, like, you know, like where a lot of the like more iconic or reoccurring iconic gay lingo and stuff and like just you know like voguing uh like voguing and uh what other other sorts of things like it's it's a lot it was very it was in, it was incredible to watch incredible to watch um and all in like suit like partial suits or full suits i'm just like i'm sweaty looking at this but this is fantastic anyway so we threw kermit onto the ground again and there was more of us this time. there was like four or five maybe six of us like surrounding Kermit in this like that like square up stance like bob and weave stance that we had going on and it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so at one point my friend was like okay well we gotta get something more out of this instead of just surrounding him on the ground so my friend scooped him up off the ground and started dancing with him, like holding him and just dancing with him and later passed him around. So that became the thing where if you wanted to j dance in the pit, you had to have t Kermit select you kind of thing. Like it was, it was a dance circle. It was a dance pit and Kermit was the freaking totem. It was so beautiful. It was hysterical to watch. It was massive. It took up, like, let's say this page is the entirety of the room. Like, it started, like, as, like, a little dot, like, a little bit right here. It became over half of the room's length of people rooting, like, cheering, hooting, and hollering, and just dancing, and it was fantastic. And we later forgot that this was mentioned earlier, like, at the opening ceremonies, but this was a bigger thing that was going on, so they had live stream cameras set up. So you could literally watch all of this beautiful green glowing chaos unfold live on the internet. <laughs> and they also had it projected on a couple of things, a couple of screens in the room. We're just like, we've created a monster, but we also create a great name for us. We'll be known as the Kermit Furries. <laughs> it was great. And then like, I don't know, we went in there at about like 9, 30, 10 o'clock-ish, and then we didn't leave until about like, about 1 a.m. or something like that. Oh my god. It was fantastic for how short it felt, like, for how short it was, basically. Because I think it went on, no, 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 we were only there until like midnight or so. But for how short we were there, like not even two or three hours, it got massive. And then when it dispersed a bit, because people were kind of getting bored of it, um... 
we were like, okay, well, crap, where's Kermit? Where's Kermit? Where's Kermit? So we asked around a little bit, like, hey, have you seen Kermit recently? Like, where is, where did Kermit go? We need to get him back. He's got, because we, we're about ready to head back to a room, junk like that, and we don't want to lose him. He's ours. So this, this person was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see him right there. Now, can you please go grab him for us? Like, again, we can't really see. And they're like, yeah, 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 because they weren't in a suit or anything. So they booked it over to grab Kermit and brought him back. And we're like, thank you. And we ended up giving the rest of the glow sticks to the second place dance competition winner. Oh, my God. So they they were incredible of a dancer, though. They were dancing to Montero in their partial fursuit. And I'm like, this is art in its highest peak. Okay, I don't care what anybody has to say. This is beautiful. So yeah, um, we went to, on Sunday we woke up kind of late, and then we kind of walked around a little bit, watched some tick, like help record some TikToks with some people, and we're just hanging out and chilling, vibing, like saying our goodbyes to some people and just having a great time. And then we went to the closing ceremonies. And um, it, there were 1,300 attendees or attendance and com uh, combined within the within the whole time frame that we were there at this convention, like start to end, fifteen thousand dollars or about fifteen thousand dollars donated to charity because they had like a an like a local animal sanctuary that they were donating to, and that part of the most of this proceeds was going to uh, you know helping them keep the lights on and keeping the space rented out and then also for. Um, spaying and neutering a bunch of rats they had in their care they had some other rats over there in like a little not like a petting area but like a, like a viewing area for them like you know they can say like hey like this is some of the animals that we have and i think you could adopt them there but i wasn't too sure but they had a couple of rats there i was like sobbing they were so precious like some of them they like i i would love to get a pet rat but my mom would absolutely kill me if i brought home a pet rat <laughs> she would she can't stand them like she barely tolerates cat, but she likes cat more than rats. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I would love to have a pet rat, but I want to do more research onto it first. Because I know, like, all animals that you're not familiar with raising, like, outside of the standard dogs and cats, you need to probably do more research on how to better take care of them, okay? That goes with any animal. Like, as much as I want a pet skunk, I know they're going to be too difficult for me to take care of because of their diets and just overall behavior patterns and stuff like that. And plus, they're an exotic animal pet, basically. So they're going to require a more expensive medical bill. There. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was... And then, so yeah, we, we were there at this hotel from Thursday afternoon-ish till about Monday morning. Oh, I was so sad when we were leaving because we were, oh, it was so, it was such a good time. It was such a great time. I hated to go. I literally spent about 33 minutes just talking about like basically a furry convention in Indiana that I went to, but I would go back in a heartbeat and apparently we are going to go back in a heartbeat. <laughs> like, as soon as we're able to get tickets for next year, we're going again. No ifs, ands, or buts. I will literally ask for that time off, like, years in advance if I have to. But we are going to another convention in Illinois relatively soon, Midwest Fur Fest. And, oh my god, I'm excited for that. It's a huge convention. Like, this is one of, like, the... This is, like, the second or third largest convention in the States for, for, for furries and stuff like that. So, we're excited. We're so excited. Um, I was working on the friendship journal that I have for my best friend. Like, just documenting and printing out pictures and stuff. Uh, for... Uh, for my friend. I'm gonna... I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I have a journal that you're never really going to see on camera. Maybe like the cover of it every now and then if I show it. But you're not going to see the inside pages. Unless I have shown you in the past. Like I might have shown like a couple of pages to like the journaling group that I'm in. Like the journal chat that I'm in on Instagram. But uh, But yeah I pretty much print out pictures of my friends and I misadventures. And will write like about what happened or just write like random letters like hey 
I noticed, like, around this time, whenever you get this, you were having, like, a really rough time. I just want to say, like, I'm proud of you. I love you, blah, blah, blah. Like, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it was just a lot of that. It's, it's a lot of that. But, um, just a lot of talking about work and junk like that. I don't really have a whole lot of work stories that I can think of. Work's been fine, minus, um... A bit of confusion going around because, uh, just simply because we have new people that are working on third shift with us, but they're not, I don't know what the hell the process is with training nowadays, but they don't know anything about what they're doing. Not even the bare minimum, it seems like. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about this day real quick. On this day, um, or either on this day, yeah, on this day, uh, I worked with my two main coworkers and the server main coworker that I have, her son, her eldest son, and his girlfriend, who that happens to be my manager's stepdaughter, uh, we were all working together, and it was a relatively... It was an average-ish night, like maybe not the busiest, maybe not the slowest or whatever. And I, uh, I didn't realize at the time, but I, uh, one of them was sick, like apparently diagnosed with COVID or something like that. But they came, one of them came in and was sick. And I, I was pissed when this happened. I was pissed when this happened. So I noticed that like the next, like, the next day or so, I was just a bit stuffy and congested, but I, li I live in a basement. I have sleep apnea and like, I will sometimes wake up and be like snotty and like have like a bit of a sore throat or whatever. It just happens. Okay. So... Uh, it was, it was about here. No, 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 wait. Okay, so here I, on, no, on Friday, two of my coworkers called off sick because they tested positive for COVID. And I'm like, oh crap. Um, well, I am the only one out of all five of us that past weekend that's fully vaccinated. So I'm going to keep an eye, like a closer eye on myself. And if my, if I notice anything's really off about me, I will go get tested. But for right now, I'm not really showing any signs minus a sore throat and stuffy nose. But that's, that could be a lot of different things. And I don't think it's really that, truly that serious as of right now. So I had a... I had somebody come in from the from another location nearby and I was cooking she was serving and the first night it went fine minus like a couple of things where I'm just like you gotta stop calling back so much all at once like it feels like you're calling back six orders all at once but it was like a party of like eight or ten or whatever and I'm like you're killing me over here smalls but um But yeah, so Friday night was fine. We got all of our crap done. Saturday, though, we came in and the joint was trashed. Like it looked like like it looked like the stampede that killed Mufasa had a party and just trashed everything in our store because the two people that were there. The server that's there, she's just not that competent alone. Apparently, there's somebody new that's working with her on um, on second that they get along with very well, and it's in tow helping her be more productive, which is fine. But the cook that we have there, he's good at what he does, but... He's just not polished enough to really be able to work on his own. Or at least alone, like, on a Friday and Saturday when it's stupid busy like it is. 
So there, the store was absolutely trashed. There's two of them and there was $650 in the drawer, which for us on second shift, that's not a lot at all. That is nothing to sneeze at. Like that's an average night. Like that's a slow, like a slower average night for second shift. So we were like, what the hell happened here? And they were saying like, oh, we were at like, we were at like uh, 300 or something earlier, but then like in this last hour we've been slammed. And I'm like, how the hell do you go from like two to 300 for five hours straight and then immediately go from 600 in this last hour? Like that makes no lick of sense. Like you'd have to have every table filled up and rotated out of here in like a bunch to go orders all at once in order for that to add up. Oh my God. So the server and I, the server and I were like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily go down to to go only. We had like a few tables inside, but we're, like, we're just going to go to go only for a little bit just until the second shift. The shift server is able to get caught up enough to where we're able to get our footing and run with it for the rest of the night. Second shift ends at about 9 o'clock. She did not leave until 11 o'clock. Because even when we were closed down for to goes only at 10 o'clock, she was still dragging her feet. And at that point, we were just like, you were literally just getting in the way of everything. Get out. Get out of the restaurant. Get out. Clock out and leave. So she left, and we stayed to go only until about midnight or so. Until about, like, midnight, 1 or 2 o'clock-ish. And the server was pissed. Because she's like, I have never had that incompetent of a server. I've never come into Swigus at all. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... I can imagine your store, from what I heard, is immaculate. Our store is far from it, and we opened up at roughly the same time. Like, our stores basically were opened up, like, about a month apart, if anything. Like, I don't know what the hell happened, but our store's garbage compared to yours. And I get that. So, yeah, it's... It's been... She deep cleaned as much as she could. She didn't get everything done side work wise, but I'm just like, for the amount that you've cleaned, I don't care. Like, she was also saying that like, I, I'm so angry. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like, I want to go home. I looked at her and I said, you do realize that it will not, it's no skin off my back if you do or you don't. I've literally had slower nights and a server leaves me because she just doesn't want to be here for whatever the reason or because she was that incompetent and just decided to leave. I've had that happen to me basically twice now. Like I had one server that I was working with who would constantly go back to her car to sleep and then come back in and out periodically whenever she was ready to. And then I had one server leave me because she was that tired because of drug rehabil- like uh, drug withdrawals basically she was recovering from drug addiction and she left me with nothing done so I literally got the entire restaurant clean minus like a, the floors and junk like that in the dining room done in three fucking hours I nearly got I nearly killed myself with that bad of a migraine that I got because I forgot to eat and drink in those three hours that I was deep cleaning everything so I told her about that and I'm like, you know, if you want to leave now, first off, I don't blame you. Second off, I don't care. I am literally just here. It will not bug me in any way, shape or form. You can do whatever you want to do before you leave. You can do nothing before you leave. Like, If you want to stay and clean for longer, feel free. That is your decision. You are not from the store. You are a guest here. I will just let whoever comes in in the morning know when you left and they will clock you out accordingly and she's like well I'm not gonna like legitimately leave you right now I'm gonna clean so she cleaned and then at like eh, about two three o'clock ish she left and I'm just like yeah 
all I really gotta do is just a couple little things from Cook's side. Like, I gotta clean off this and that and the other. But other than that, I'm solid. So I literally just sat there writing in my journal for, like, three or four hours. <laughs> and I'm just, like, playing on my phone or whatever. So I'm like, cool beans. And then the manager that I don't really like, because she's, like, half out the door of retirement, came in. And she's like, where the hell is your server? And I'm like, oh, she left at about three o'clock. She's like, what? And I'm like, yeah. Uh... So I explained to her what happened all the night. And she's like, damn. I was like, yeah. So I was trying to like, ask her some questions, but she was on the phone. And so she went, she was literally like halfway to Butterbee's across the freaking Meyer parking lot that we're in. On the phone, I'm like, oh, she's pissed. She's on her phone. She's talking. She's literally pacing the entire <laughs> Meyer parking lot out in back. Oh, it was, it was awful, but, <sighs> you know what, knowing her and how she's kind of treated me lately and just how she's basically taking care of our store, I don't really feel that bad for her because she's literally half, she's got like one foot out the door because she's that ready to retire and she's really just kicking the dust back in her face while she's like prepping herself to sprint, like it's stupid. Anyway, um, just a lot of talking about this other work things. Like, I can't really think of anything else. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. I forgot. I was so busy slipped up on the story. So, this day, I was feeling worse. Like, my snottiness and sore throat was getting worse, and I was starting to lose my sense of taste and smell. Because I got up and I took a shower and I was putting on my deodorant stick and I'm like, because I like to smell it. It smells like a blue Jolly Rancher. It's Old Spice Wolf Thorn, the gel variety, for those who are wondering. Um, and instead of smelling a blue Jolly Rancher, I was like, oh God, this smells like cigarettes. And I'm like, it's not supposed to smell like that, but it's, it wasn't a bad batch. It was a pretty fresh deodorant stick, like about halfway used or a little over halfway used. And I'm like, oh shit. So I called my mom and I'm like, hey, um, my deodorant smells like a freaking. it smells like my second cousin's house. Cause my second cousin, she's a horrible smoker. And she has cats, so whenever she has company over, how she tries to mask it is just open up the windows, like every window in the house, and spray like eight cans of Febreze around the house. So it doesn't smell good at all. It smelled like her house, and I'm like, oh, God. Like, that was the rule of thumb whenever we went to go visit my second cousin. If you went to go visit her, don't bring clothes that you actually care about in case they get permanently stinkified by her cigarette smells. <sighs> yeah. So we went to a clinic nearby, like right next to my work actually. And I waited like two fucking hours for this place to take me back and test me and stuff like that. Like it was like an hour and 30 minutes just sitting in the waiting room, like in the lobby. And then they took me back and it was like 30 minutes after she like, like the nurse asked the initial questions, like, you know, what brings you in? You want to get a COVID test? And, like, what kind of symptoms are you experiencing? Blah, 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 blah. And another 30 minutes of waiting for the doctor to come back and, like, actually swab me. And then I was sent home. And I'm like, okay. So I'm home now, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, my God. At, like, 7 a.m. or whatever... Yeah, past, or after 7 o'clock, like, I'm going to say about, like, noonish when I got back in junk and was, like, waiting for a while. <sighs> it, my test came back positive. And I was, like, I was pissed. Because I'm, like, somebody on Friday or Saturday night had the fucking balls to come in sick and literally knock out the entirety of third shift with COVID. The entirety of third shift in one fucking swoop. So also I forgot to say, 
I had a concert that I was expected to go, like I was hoping to go to. But because of that, and my quarantine period wasn't over with until the freaking 14th, basically. Oh my god, I was pissed off. So I had to email the venue, and I'm like, hey... I don't know what the refund policy is, as I couldn't really figure it out that well on your website. If possible, I do need a refund for the concert for Nathan Sharp Mate Wants to Battle on the, what, what, when even was it supposed to be? The 9th, because I tested positive for COVID and therefore I cannot attend. Like, if I can get a refund, that'd be great. If not, I don't care. Just have a good, have a good day. And I ended up getting my money back, but... Oh my god, I was pissed. So, it was just me, like, angry ranting and junk about all that. Just, I was, like, I, like, updates, like, hey, I still can't smell, still can't taste. I pretty much have it all back, but certain things are still kind of wonky, but it's pretty much back to normal. So, yeah. And then this day was interesting because this was the day we were supposed to, you know, go to that concert and junk like that. And my friend and I were literally hoping to, um, my friend and I were hoping to go and, you know, make a couple of pit stops in Cleveland because it was supposed to be in Cleveland, Ohio instead of Cincinnati where we are. And, you know, we were supposed to go stay at our mom's house and... Uh, like check out a couple of places and junk like that that we noticed were in that area and just you know have a good ass time and I looked at I was looking on my phone on Instagram and apparently the guy Nathan Sharp made a post saying like hey a couple of our the members that we're touring with are testing positive for COVID so we're not doing tonight's show and the rest of the tour shows so refunds will be issued and um next time we're able to tour the cities that we miss so cleveland being one of them priority and i'm like awkward coincidence but at least next time he's touring first off we're dead set that we're gonna try to get the vip packages because we missed out we barely missed out on it last time not that we, were, we didn't get them this time, but we barely missed it. And we just missed it from getting those. So we're going to definitely try to get the VIP packages. And then we're going to be a prioritized city. So that's awesome. But it was it was such a weird feeling, this day. Because I'm just like, God, what the hell? So all that I had to look forward to after this, when I was done with my quarantine as of like the 14th, um, was the dentist, which I hate the dentist. I don't care if people like the dentist, they're like, I'm sorry, you are a absolute bitch for pain. Like, I, the dentist sucks, okay? <laughs> so yeah, just a lot of, um, I did end up throwing out a lot of cutouts and junk. I have like a box full of washi tape and stuff that I just don't want to use anymore. Or like stickers and junk, like like papers, stickers, washi tape, stuff that I just know that I'm never going to use. Like I've kept it for so long and I just can't really, f I have never figured out the use that I want for it. And or I was gifted it and just had no idea what to do with it, but just had just held on to it. So... I have like a box about halfway full of junk that like crafting stuff that I'm not going to use. I don't know what I'm going to do with it after I finish going through everything, but I'm pretty much am. So we'll see. Um, so I was talking about what I wanted to do for Cincinnati comic expo, um, coming up. Actually, give me one second. I can grab this here. It's, it's an arm's reach. So, um, at Cincinnati Comic Expo, like, in 2019, Jody Benson was going to come back. 
But on top of it being Jod Jody Benson being there, um, Irene Bedard or Bedard, I'm not sure I pronounced her last name, the voice actress for Pocahontas was going to be there. So I'm like, oh shit, I gotta have them sign something. Because, like, I usually have people that I meet, like, famous people that I meet sign my journal all the time, but this journal was pretty close to being done, even though I now have plenty of pages left over, just spoiler alert. But, um, I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough space to write in this and have them sign. So I was, like, rattling my pea brain like a pinball to figure out what I wanted to do. But I'll get to that in a minute. Well, actually, I'll show you now. So, decorate these postcards. This one for Jody Benson, because, you know, she's Ariel. <laughs> and then this one for Irene. And I'll show you the backs. This one was Jody Benson's. Lord. I, oh, my God. I, ugh. Meeting Irene, though, when I met her, oh, my God, she was so sweet. Like, they're so nice. She was so nice. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, um, I didn't end up writing for, like, the days that I went to go hang out with my friend because I was, you know, too busy getting ready. And I didn't even bring my journal with me because you are going to be busy. Just straight up, you are going to be busy. So we weren't too sure if we were going to even go in cosplay or in our fursuits to begin with. Because this isn't a furry convention. There's not going to be a headless lounge. But, um, you know, like, will people even tolerate us being there? Because, you know, furries get a lot of hate for no freaking reason. And for some people, they're probably going to be like, well, furries are sexual. It's like, no, furries are not inherently sexual. The furry fandom is just as sexualized as any other fandom in on the goddamn planet. Like, there is no safe fandom from Rule 34. Pokemon's been sexualized. Danganronpa is very sexualized, unfortunately. As well as Pokemon, unfortunately, being sexualized. Not all the characters are 18+, plus. that's for sure, I'll tell you that much. And even the Pokemon themselves have been sexualized. But nobody likes that. Zoo files are not welcome in the furry fandom. Anyway, so we were just like, well, what the hell are we going to do with, um, like, what are we going to do if we don't even end up going in suit? Like, what are we going to do for three fucking days of just walking around and looking at cosplays, basically? So we went in on Friday, and we got our tickets, which was just this chintzy paper band. Like, I feel like with... How much the tickets are and for how big this convention can get, they would at least have, like, a lanyard badge, at least. Like, you could even just provide your own lanyard or clip or whatever, but, like, they give you, like, a little placard or whatever. But it's just these little, like, paper wristbands, like, got concerts or whatever. But, um, so, yeah, we went in and we waited in the line. We had about, like, 20, we had about, like, about, like, 30-ish minutes until we had to... We were able to go in on the, fl on the floor because the doors opened early for VIP members and then a bit later for non-VIP members. So we went in and waited a little bit and we were just like looking in the line like, ooh, there's a, that character cosplay, ooh, there's that cosplay, there's that character's cosplay, there's a cosplay of this, cosplay of that. And we noticed that some people had like furry ears and tail, like headband ears and tail. and. We were like, okay, well, maybe maybe we should wear our suits. Maybe we should go in and after a while we'll go and grab our suits. Or at least maybe start tomorrow. Like, we'll get all our shopping done today, do whatever, and then we'll come back in tomorrow and then be in our suits. And then my friend saw a Dante from Devil May Cry cosplay, and she's like, I gotta get a picture of Wild <laughs> with Dante. So... I'm like, oh damn, I have never seen you that hype with determination before, as of yet. So, <laughs> we did all of our shopping, and I went to go see Jodie Benson, but Jodie Benson seemed kind of rushed, but I'm just like, you know what, that's fine. She's kind of busy and junk. And then I went to go see Irene, and I was telling her, like, you know, you know, the like, how have you been since COVID and stuff like that? Like, since the quarantine, I'm sure it's been crazy, and she's like, oh, well... I actually did catch COVID, but, you know, I'm 
thankfully better and ever, even since then like it was kind of like I went on a bit of like a self-healing process like physically mentally emotionally spiritually I'm just like oh well that's definitely a very healthy way to reflect on it during the lockdown stuff I know a lot of people have been struggling with stuff like that and kind of in the same boat me too because like I recently came out to my family as non-binary and um it wasn't really good on my dad's side but you know as Pocahontas says the right path's not always the easiest even though I know it's for different clauses and stuff but oh but we just had a very pleasant conversation and then she was like raving over the postcard that I design and she's like oh well do you like do this kind of stuff for a living I'm like not for a living but it's like it's a very passionate hobby of mine and she was just like this is so pretty like this is so cute like what the heck oh my gosh and I'm like oh thank you like ah and um I paid for like the autograph and selfie combo and she was like okay let's get a picture again and I'm like oh you're coming behind she's like yeah and she's like can I hug you and just like you want to hug me? <laughs> like, you want to hug me? So I hugged her and she was like, she gave me like the, t the most like secure hug I've probably felt in like centuries and a half. I wanted to cry. And we took the picture and she was like, it was so lovely to meet you. And I'm like, it was so lovely to meet you too. Like, can I have one more hug before I go? And she was like, oh my gosh, of course. And I, I wanted to go see my friend. She was like looking at a booth nearby. And I'm like, pardon me, I'm just half emotional right now. Like, I had, like, some tears forming, like, all happy tears. Oh, my God. But I was, like, <laughs> oh, my God. She's so nice. Like, what the heck? Like, ah. Oh, it was, like, such a touching moment for me. And it was just so good. So after we went shopping and I bought, <laughs> my friend and I convinced each other, because before we were telling ourselves that we're not going to be that level of nerd to where we're going to buy body pillows of our favorite characters, before, but at this con we noticed that there was a booth selling Hawks and Dobby body pillow cover slips, um... And one behind it was selling fat gum, a fat gum body pillow slip. And my friend's like, it's a fat gum body pillow slip. You going to get it? And I'm like, only if you get one of those Dobby or Hawks ones, at least one of them. And they're like, bet. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, when you going to get, you gonna get yours? If you get yours, I'll get mine. We'll get it at the same time. And they're like, well, my friend's like, well, I will get it when I get in wild because I don't want to, I don't want people to see my face when I buy it. And I'm like, oh, you're being chicken shit, but okay, whatever. I'll, t <laughs> I'll take your word for it. So I bought my fat gum one and let me say it's not spicy. It's not zesty. It's nothing. It's nothing not safe for work. It's, it's fine. And actually shit. I can even show you a little keychain version of it. I was... I was a little greedy motherfucker. <laughs> Ugh, I still need to unpack this bag, but it's just my merch. It's not like clothes or anything. It's just like the stuff I need to put away. Where's the keychain? Where is the hand keychain of my husband? Here it is. All right, so this is the one side of it in his fat form, just being his amazing, beautiful self. And then this is the other side, just, just a little, just a skinny gum form. It's all curled up, looking handsome, as always. He's handsome in both forms. If you say fat gum is only handsome in a skinny form, get off my feed. Get off my page. <laughs> so yeah, I got my fat gum body pillow slip and then some. And then my friend and I went back to the car and my friend changed in her car and I got just put on the head and paws and the tail and like at the trunk. And then we went back in and it was, it was, it was really good. We had a lot of people like, oh my gosh, like we love your fur. She's like, we love your costumes, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, 
thank you, thank you, wow, thank you. And we had a couple of kids interact with us and they were, they, they were like fascinated by us. It was almost like meeting a Disney character to them, but you know, we were able to talk to them because we're like, we don't have the rules of, we have to abide to a contract of like, you know, we can't defame the character or speak as the character and stuff like that because we're our own characters. So yeah. And we had one little girl and her mom approach us and the mom's just like, I don't mean to bug you guys, but like my little girl here has just been like, she saw you guys and she just would not stop staring and talking about you guys. And she wanted to say hi to you guys. And we're like, oh my gosh, yeah, of course. So like we got like got low, like got on our knees and stuff like that. And we were like, hi, sweetheart. Like we love your dress. And like, it's so pretty. Like, it's, like she was like in a little aerial dress and her mom just looked like as Ursula. And we were talking with her and stuff. And we later went to go sit down for a minute to just kind of cool off and just rest our feet. And the mom and little girl came back and they were just like, yeah, like you're just talking a bit and like playing with her for a little bit in this little like seating area. And the mom was talking about how like, you know, like, oh, well, I'm, I'm like, I'm friends with the Easter Bunny and blah, blah, blah. And like my little girl loves mascot characters and I work it for some, for like, I work as a few characters and blah, blah, blah. And we're having really cool conversations and stuff like that. And... Um, it was just really cool. We're just like, this is fantastic. Like, this has been a really great day. So we're definitely going to come back tomorrow and just go full day in suit. And the next day we came back and it was a lot of, again, a lot of like, oh my gosh, we love your suits, love your suits. We had like one really shitty, shitty guy come up and like low key harassed my friend. Oh, well, high key low key harassed my friend but it was dealt with it was just one big thing but other than that it was fine overall and um the mom was there still and she came back and she's like oh my gosh I'm so glad I found you guys again like my little girl like she wasn't there with her but like she just went home recently apparently and she's like oh my little girl was like talking about you guys and she was calling my friend wild a dragon and she was calling me sisu cat or what, however you pronounce it it was the little girl the, the dragon from raya and the last dragon and i'm like oh my god she thinks i'm like a disney character like i fucking adore that <laughs> it, was so, it was so cute so uh we had a really great time it wasn't really that exciting minus like just that the little bits and bobs but we went back to we went to Fazoli's after or no, no no wait back to first day real quick on Friday we were walking around and this guy was holding a camera he was like excuse me and like holding up his camera and was like wait like no she can come over and we were like sure so we went over and it's like so if you need sir you want to take a picture he's like yeah I'm with the inquirer I would like to take your guys picture for our online article like our online picture showcase and I'm like we're like, oh, hell yeah. So we like got to where he wanted us to stay and we took up, we, like, we posed for a bit and we took the pictures, I took a couple pictures. And he's like, thank you so much. Like, we look, like your costumes are great. And we're like, oh, thank you. So um, he asked us like, are your guys' outfits characters from any particular show or anything? And we're like, no, 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 no. Uh, my friend made her suit and I bought mine. So, um, so he was like asking a couple things like, well, what's the name of the character and like, what's your name? But we didn't, we said that we wouldn't, we would don't want our names linked to our characters. So he's like, that's cool. I respect that. So we like crossed them out real quick and it's like, well, thank you again. Like, uh, they, w they should be posted online either as late as Sunday, maybe Monday. It just depends on how things go. We're like, okay, thank you so much. Like, he gave us the website. We took the slip real quick. Like, he wrote down the website and junk. So, yeah. Now, back to Saturday. We went to Fazoli's because, again, that's our con staple food. It doesn't matter when we go. as If we are going to any convention, either on the way to, during it, or on the way back, we have to have Fazoli's. That's just now our rule. So, we went to Fazoli's. It's, like, about 20 minutes away in Kentucky. And we came on the drive back back uh we were on the phone with my friend's mom and we were like oh well crap I'm gonna check the website real quick to see what see if that article's been posted or whatever and it wasn't really an article it was just like 
a showcase gallery of like the costumes that were seen at Cincinnati Comic Expo. And I'm like, okay, well, he did take our picture, so hopefully they used it. I mean, I'm pretty sure not every picture got used, but let's hope. And there was like 20 something pictures used. So I was scrolling, I was like, oh, I saw that guy. We saw that guy. That, that costume is awesome. <gasps> it's us. So that was like, we were like, oh my God, like we were geeking out so much in the car. We literally stopped at three gas stations to see if um, it happened to be published in the physical paper. Spoiler alert, it was not. So, um, yeah, it wasn't used in the paper, like in the physical paper, but it was in the online article. So we were like, this is fucking awesome. Like, we're into papers. <laughs> so, so that was like super freaking cool and groovy. So we went into, we went back to my friend's house after we had dinner and... We were in my friend's room, just kind of lounging for a bit after we showered and junk. And my mom was texting me and she's like, hey, when did you meet a former Miss Ohio? And I'm like, what are you talking about, a former Miss Ohio? And she's like, I follow a former Miss Ohio on Instagram. And she had a picture of her daughter with, with you two. And I'm like... We met quite a few kids. Like, can you send us a quick screenshot of one of the pictures? Like, I can tell by the outfit the kids are wearing or whatever, because like we, yeah, we met a few kids, but some of them really stood out. And she sent a screenshot, and it was of the little girl that we were, that we met with the mom that was like raving to us about like our costumes and stuff. And I'm like hold up <laughs> like, and apparently she runs a costuming like a costuming uh like a costume center or whatever not like a, not like a center but like a costuming like a character center or whatever but like she sends out like disney princesses and like mascot characters to community events or like birthday parties and stuff so i was telling my friend this and she was like what? Like, we were just, like, in shock and awe. And it, it was insane. We were just, like, we literally got recognized and, like, we were, like, fond, like, flabberg, like, we were admired heavily by a former Miss Ohio that happens to have, like, a charactering department or whatever of her own. And like is a character in some cases or like works for or works at or like runs or whatever i'm not sure exactly what the phrase like what it is like what the exact situation is but we were just floored like absolutely floored and then on the saturday that we were talking about this that's when i found that stupid possum meme and i was tickled so pink i was crying from giggling so much I literally would not stop la like giggling for 20 minutes. It was that bad. That hit the right core at the right time. But yeah, it was... It was incredible. And on Sunday we went in, and a friend of... Like, somebody that my friend knows from hockey was saying, like, Hey, I've been waiting in the line for the voice actor for All Might for, like, hours. And we can't really leave it. And I'm, like, dying of thirst. Can you please bring me, like, some water or something to drink when you guys get in? And we're like, yeah. Like, as soon as we get in, we'll look for you in the line. And then we'll give you some water or whatever the hell we have our, on, on hand. And uh, we went in. Like, as soon as we went past the little security gate checkpoint to get in, bombarded for pictures. And... For some reason, Sunday night was the busiest because, again, I'm pretty sure this voice actor was just going to be there. He was This voice actor was only going to be there for Sunday only. And he was going to be in there a little late. But he was also going to stay there the entire time and then some to make sure that everybody in his line got an autograph and a picture or whatever. So that was really cool on him to do that. Shout out to that guy. Shout out to that voice actor. I cannot remember his name. I'm pretty sure it's Chris something. But I can't remember his like full name to really save my life. All I know is that he voices All Might and I think Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z, if that helps any way, shape, or form. But, um, 
but yeah, so we tried to go to the line to drop off the water, but we kept getting stopped and started for pictures. It took us like 20 minutes to get to just that line. Like we were trying to just make a B line, but it was just stop and start, stop and start, stop and start, stop and start, stop and start. Oh my God, but we did eventually drop off the water, but he's like, yeah, I kept seeing you guys getting stopped for pictures. We're like, we're sorry. He's like, no, it's all good. I saw you guys were on your way here. I'm not mad. So we gave him the water and um, we gave him the water and then we kind of went around a bit more and did like a little bit more shopping and stuff like that. And again, we just kept getting bombarded for pictures. It almost felt like we were like we were like a meet and greet booth or whatever, like a panel or whatever. Like we, we were just like, we might as well just park here and whoever passes us and wants pictures can just take a picture. <laughs> Cause we were just like, we were basically having lines for <laughs> to get our pictures taken. But it's like, we're not exhibitors. <laughs> we're not like special guest cosplayers or whatever was with this. But we were like one of two or three furries at this convention <laughs> so it was it was crazy oh, it was funny but it was it, it was a blast though it was such a good time I miss it all so much <laughs> so yeah and just a lot of work stories and stuff so currently at work um the cook that we had earlier, um, that later that later on moved to Columbus. Apparently, I didn't realize it was going to be temporarily moved away because he's been gone for like a, about three or so months. But that cook is coming back, and he's going to come back to our shifts. So everybody's like celebrating that because he is fantastic. He's a fantastic cook really great to work with he helps out everybody like when it was just the two of us working alone on like six like 12 to 16 to 18 dollar nights that man would literally help me do dishes he'd help me bust tables he'd help me set tables he'd help me cook orders he helped me take orders in some cases and I'm like I can do this like thank you for all your help but like if you can just help me with busting tables and a few dishes if you can like, I can do the rest. Like, if you want to also help me with cashing out, that's great too. But, like, I can do this. I just, I don't want to drag you down. He's like, nah, I got it. So, everybody's ecstatic that he's coming back. And it, we're all, like, so happy for that. So, everybody's looking forward to that, especially. Um, but at one point, I was talking with my cook. And I was telling him, like, you know... I recently went through my phone and I found my notes for a Pokemon Professor OC that I have. And I was telling him, like, about him and, like, what I have set up for, like, his backstory and stuff. Another junk like that. And I was just like, oh, man, I'm making myself depressed. Because I want to write, like, I want to work more with him. I want to write a story about him. I want to role play with him. Like... Like, I want to find a roleplay partner and, like, use this character and story together and stuff like that. Like, I want him to interact with other people's OCs and junk. Like, I want to, I want to use my Pokemon Professor OC so much to the point where it's now physically hurting me. <laughs> and, oh, I miss him so much. Like, I, I still have my notes. I'm tweaking them a bit more and more as I go. I, ha I actually drew a lot of concept art, a good amount of concept art for him. And I'm just like, I want to use him so bad, it's physically, hurt, it's physically making me, like, painful. Like, it's paining, it's making my heart pain. My heart is in pain, is what I meant to say. I can't English. I'm getting close to this. I've been at this for almost an hour and 20 minutes. But yeah, so. And also, um, I was telling about, like, how... I really pushed his design and stuff more and like more backstory to him because I had a, I was going to have another role play partner, but then they ended up being a kind of crappy person before we even started all this. And we had a bad fallout with her and another, if you even want to call it that at this point, friend of ours. 
so yeah, it was, it was crazy. But yeah, just last pages and just kind of like, I'm so tired and, oh! So we also, I skipped a couple of days, but we went to Eastgate Lanes. My friend and I went to Eastgate Lanes with two friends that we met at Indy Furcon. And we went to a local bowling alley that's like not even two minutes away from me in our suits. And we had a absolute blast doing that as well. On Tuesdays, this bowling alley has all you can bowl and all you can eat pizza for two hours for like a set price per person and stuff. So I paid for our bowling and pizza and we just, we had a great time. We only really bowled like a game and a half and we had like a, one whole pizza, but it was, it was so much fun. So we're definitely trying to do more meetups like that and hopefully with more people that we ended up meeting at Indie Fur Con and stuff. Oh, it, it was just so great. And then all these blank pages because I just got tired and stuff. Because as much as I like this journal, I wasn't the biggest fan of how I was writing in it. Just something about it wasn't just straight in the cord, which is fine. Oh, and also my birthday was the Sunday of that convention and stuff, but we didn't really make, I didn't make a big deal about it. My friend just insisted she buy me dinner and like a couple of bits of merchandise. And I'm like, you don't have to do that for shit, but whatever. Like, I cannot physically stop you. <laughs> like, my friend just bought me, like, a Cincinnati Comic Expo t-shirt and, um, and a lanyard. So, we have something to wear for next year when we go. And this is the back of my book. I used Glasses Hand Soap from Bath & Body Works. It's Blueberry Crumble. It smells delightful. Um, this was some stickers that I got from Etsy that I used in my Disney plane, or my Disney travel log. I just put that here. That's the name of the Etsy shop, for, for those who are wondering. I don't remember exactly what these stickers were, but if you want some Disney stickers from Etsy, this is a shop that I, that I got from. And then I got DoorDash ordered, and that was from the Dasher. And yeah. I know it was mostly story time, but that's pretty much how all of my journal flip-throughs are at this point. They're just story times with some somewhat decent looking visuals. So yeah, that's that. And this is my current journal. It's just a composition notebook. I can't really flip it that well because I'm under the glass coffee table again. If you can't tell. Oh, and well, I don't know if I should show this. I don't know how my friends get, would feel about it. But also at the convention, we met a couple of vendors that we were just like talking to a lot. And we got a couple of pictures of us taken there, like, of us, like, on our phones and junk. And we ended up making a couple of prints to give out to either some people that we really vibe with and stuff. We wanted to give one little girl that we met. And we ended up only giving one to a vendor that we ended up hanging out with a lot. But my friend has an autograph for her fursona. I need to work on one for Dandy, but I've been working on one for Donut. But, yeah. Uh... I have one of the pictures of us back to back looking all cool. <laughs> it's got her autographs and stuff. It's fantastic. Oh my god, I miss the convention so much, but we have one coming up in December, Midwest Fur Fest. I'm so excited. But yeah. So yeah, this is my current journal. I'll try to show you a couple of the pages, maybe. Just kind of a brief little flip-ish thing. So yeah, that was pretty much this journal. I hope you guys enjoyed. Oh, free wiki feet. <laughs> I'll be all right. Hope you guys enjoyed this flip through. Sorry if it was too chatty for your liking. I just, I like being chatty in my flip throughs because my, my spreads aren't all that exciting to look at for the most part, I'm realizing. But you know what, it happens. So... Yeah, I will see you guys later, and I hope you guys have a good one. Bye!